Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of So Chatty. Did you miss us? Because we didn't do one last week because we weren't here last week to do it. We were on our way actually home from BC. So today's uh, episode, which is episode number 98 for May the 5th, uh, 2023, it's Cinco de Mayo. Mayo? Cinco, what the hell do they call that? What's that Mexican thing for today? Well, what was, that one, de... what was the one that I showed the fabric on last time? Did we show it on so chatty? Did we do so chatty last week? I think we might have, or something. We did something. Last no, week. you showed those on Stephen and Walter Live. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. We had st you talk amongst yourselves while I sort them out. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay, sure. Are you with me now? Yeah, I guess. On the same page. Let us begin again then. Okay, so welcome. We're going to talk about uh, the six. We actually went to seven, but we went actually six that we bought fabric from and had a great experience with. One of them we'll talk about near the end, which we have no video for or whatever because it wasn't worth the effort. But we're going to talk about these. And how I'm going to do it today is I'm going to show you a picture of the fabrics that we bought at each store. And then I'm going to uh, put in a little two minute clip uh, that I did of each store when we were there. And then we're going to come back and we're going to sort of talk a little bit about each store, you know, what we thought found somewhat unique about them or what we liked, what we didn't like, that kind of stuff about them all. Actually, there wasn't anything really we didn't like about any of them, I don't think. Um, they were all quite unique in their own way. So without, well, just before we do that, some announcements. Okay, so Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen is on Wednesdays, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Links in the show notes below if you're interested in that. We had craft and chat in this past week. Every time we do craft and chat, there's a few more people join us. I think at the height, we had over 30. Uh, with that, that happens the first Wednesday of every month in the afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the week before, the link to So Chatty, or not So Chatty, but to craft and chat will be in the show notes below. Plus, if you want to be on any mailing lists, like for my pop-up so days or for craft and chat. Um, we don't have a mailing list for uh, sewing with Stephanie and Steven. Um, that link's just in the every week in all the videos that I make. But if you want to be on, on the, any of those other mailing lists, just drop me a line, email address is in the show notes, and I'll add you to it, no problem. Um, okay, and of course, big event this weekend is the idiot quilter spring retreat for 2023 uh that's on saturday starts at 8 a.m eastern standard time um of course if you're not registered for it you can't come it's full it's done yep uh so sorry about that you're not going to find a link for that in the show notes because it is a closed zoom session it's for people who registered for it but anyways, for those of you that, of you that have, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I open up the doors, the virtual doors, so to speak. You don't have to be there at 8 a.m. Um, I know we're all in different time zones, so whenever you decide you want to join in, that's just fine. Your spot is reserved for you, so don't worry about that. Um, the guest speakers are all ready to go. I've talked to them, all of them, and they're ready, and we have prizes, and it's going to be a great day. So that's Saturday. But tonight, we do have, again, for only those people who registered for the retreat, we do have the Icebreaker Cocktail Party starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So bring your favorite beverage, whatever it is, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, something in between, um, a snack if you wish. We will be having jacuzzi um, for that. And um, we're just going to have a good time. For a couple of hours uh if you have something you'd like to show us uh you know in the line of quilts or garments or bags anything, anything you've made you've got something you'd like to show us you can bring that along we can have a little show and share and we're going to play a couple of games maybe and that kind of thing it's usually a good time so it's not oblig uh, it's not obligatory of course it's for those of you that would like to do that and it's just you know for some people this will be their first retreat with me um so it'll help you get sort of a sense of what we're all about uh, with that. Okay. Oh, and I'll be going over a few things about tomorrow's setup as well uh, during that. But uh, if, but if you miss that, I'll be going over them again tomorrow morning. Okay. 
So let's jump right in. So we first quilt store we went to is on in uh Victoria, Vancouver. Right. And it was on that was that island called Granville? Granville Island, yeah. Yeah. It Granville Island is uh basically it was for increasing industrial space in about the 1920s or 30s, I think. They built this little island just off the shore well, of, well it may have had uh warehouses and stuff. yeah it had well it was industrial yeah. it was warehouses and stuff like that and it was also served to support a bridge that they built across that way as well that basically what does that link up into north vancouver or? that's their main bridge that goes into the uh, southern part of vancouver and that oh okay to richmond where the airport is oh right right and to uh um i forget what's uh there's another suburb there surrey surrey yeah and uh there's and then on your way to abbotsford and yeah. things like that yeah. so. Okay. so anyways so they had they they made this man-made island and so they decided to also use this industrial space but over the years it has been redeveloped into more of a tourist attraction with a whole bunch of of uh, little shops and bakeries and, and a, a big market a food market yeah there's like a big that. food market and if you saw the videos that we produced while we were away uh you'll see all of that on one of the videos um and by the way in the show notes you'll find a link to a playlist i've set up of our trip that has i think 10 videos in it for uh, i tried to post a video almost every day on the trip wherever we were uh at the time but anyways this is where this uh quilt store is now vancouver itself did not really have any quilting stores yeah none that we could really find. no this was about it there was a fabric place that we kind of walked by but yeah there was a place that uh supposedly had originally sold um fabric for clothing for uh apparel and it was actually quite a big uh, outfit, and it looked like it was closed down. Um, its website was still up, so I don't know if they went to a uh, uh, what do you call it a non uh, an online store or uh, they don't have a brick and mortar store. I don't know if it was actually operating or not. I haven't gone back to look. Well, it wasn't in so, the nicest part of town. No, it isn't. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that area of town um, uh, isn't very good because of uh there's a lot of homeless there a lot of homeless there and, and a lot of uh, uh, uh people that, that on are, drugs are uh drug users and yeah. stuff so it could be that that place went to more of a online model because yeah, maybe. of uh the physical location probably people didn't want to go and there, maybe so. the pandemic had something to do with it yeah, as well because a lot of a lot of businesses did go that route as well because of that so anyways we did go to this place it's called the cloth shop and i'll show you the um just let me find it here i'll show you what we bought what i bought um walter didn't buy any fabric in this one it, it was a very small store very small i mean basically if you swung a dead cat around by a rope it would hit all the walls no problem and i didn't see personally i didn't see any yardage that uh, looked unique to me, other than you found some stuff that was in the fat quarters that yeah. were somewhat unique. Which you can see here up on the right hand side of your screen at the top, the ones that look like, uh, I don't know, antique books or something like that. That blue swirl one that you have at the bottom, I've seen it at other places. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was that the ones with the antique books and that I haven't seen. Well, I bought two bundles of those. Yeah, they were fat quarter bundles, and that blue fabric you're talking about was included in both of those bundles because mm -hmm. I have one bundle mm -hmm. opened up so you can see the the fabrics a little bit better. But I don't. I I saw it. I have no idea what I'll ever use it for, but it attracted me to it. I'm thinking that this kind of fabric would make a really neat uh type of bag. Uh, a tote bag or maybe something a little bit more elaborate like a bag by Annie or whatever like that and I can't remember what I paid for the bundle it wasn't bad price-wise but as far as yardage was concerned in this store there wasn't a lot but what they did have they did have stuff that I hadn't seen before and if you look in the middle section these were loose fat quarters they weren't a bundle and uh 
no sorry they were a bundle they were a bundle too uh as well a little bigger bundle um but there's some in here that i've never really seen before and you know the thing about binding a bundle is often that they're curated they all go together in such a way and these ones do but they would not necessarily be the way i would put them together so i'm leaving all of the bundles that i've bought all tied together i'm not going to separate them up and put them in my stash because i'm thinking now if i find patterns that i think these might be suitable for then i've got them all they're already coordinated now the one on the left side is actually a kit it's now it's batiks and you know i love batiks but if you notice the label um valley christmas table runner and it has instructions for putting this table runner together and it's a very simple table runner it's just strips basically a fabric but why they call it christmas i'm not really sure because um those fabrics are not really what i would consider christmas fabrics um but it was 50 percent off so it was 35 dollars, but 50 maybe it's off. just a valley print and it's sold at christmas maybe <laughs> i don't know that's a possibility um because bally is the name of a a, a line of batiks yeah um but either way i thought it would make it a, a nice table runner it was 17 bucks 1750 because i had 50 percent off on it and so i picked it up uh because i i do like kits uh kind of thing and you know you can always use another table runner like as a gift or something like that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to insert here a little two minute clip from what the inside of the store looks like and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about that okay so it took a little doing but we found it it's the cloth shop is right there where those people are going in so we'll see Okay, so the second place that we went to, and I bought some fabric at it as well, was called the Troll Brothers. Now, some time ago, I did do a review of their online store, and they have a fairly extensive online store. Uh, so we went here, and you can see what I bought. I bought a bundle of stuff that's in sort of blues and teals. Um, separately, if I saw these on a shelf, I probably wouldn't be wouldn't gravitate towards them. But when I saw them in the bundle, I kind of liked them the way it all went together. And as I said earlier, I'm going to keep the bundles together and look for projects that I can use the majority of the bundle in. So I bought those and the ones in the center kind of remind me of Spider Man, but they're not a spider web. Um, those were I believe they were either half meter or meter, I think they were meter um, cuts, they were already pre cut. And I bought three, and each one's a slightly different color wave, same pattern. But when you open them up, they're kind of gradient as well. So no idea what I'm going to do with them, but I thought they were a little unusual. And the strapping, I have never seen strapping sold by the meter um, anywhere before. And this is canvas strapping. It's got, uh, you know, it's fancy. It's got a design, different colors in it. So I bought two different types. I think I bought two meters. Uh, it was pricey um they sold it by the quarter meter and i think one of them was something like uh two dollars and 35 cents a quarter meter um so you know buying two meters of it was about 17 dollars, and the other one was i think about the same price but i thought i've never seen it anywhere before i'm sure it is available well i, just... I know you can buy all uh strapping usually at most quilt stores but it's at, uh, but it's usually plain. Yeah, well, that's well, I have some, but it's plain yeah. uh, with it. I hadn't seen. I hadn't seen like the that. one that had the stripes in it. 
no but anyway so that's what i purchased there but walter did buy some fabric as well which he'll show you right now yeah i bought the end of a bolt of this fabric and it's uh one that has all kinds of like uh, travel places on it type of thing now i don't know if i have enough to make actually a shirt out of it but uh i thought well it was kind of fun i haven't seen it before and i uh, thought maybe i'd get it while i saw it so there's that and i found another one again i wasn't sure whether i make a shirt out of it or do something else with it and again it's got all different kinds of of uh places to go to and see and uh traveling around and um so you know it's kind of fun uh whether i use it for a shirt or make a bag out of it i'm not sure you make a great bag yeah so uh, i thought i'd get those two because there's something i haven't really seen around i'm sure other places have them but i didn't see them anywhere else so so you picked them up so anyways this is, was not a huge store it was in a little tiny place that had like a drug store on one corner a post office on another uh a little diner of something or other on another corner and this quilt store right and it, it, was, it was a very small town it was almost like a little resort area because um there was a small lake there and so there may be a, maybe a sort of a a summary type uh, place that people go to but it was a very tiny little place it was uh, off the beaten track from uh, the main highway that goes from Victoria to Nanaimo and you have to veer off to the west a bit uh, out of your way for about half an hour to get to this location thank goodness and it's, for uh, GPS. Sean again Sean again Sean yeah. again is the name of the little community yeah. that it was located in. and it was a small place but kind of rustic kind of cute because it had sort of a log cabin-y look to it but I'll show you the video clip of yeah, that and it was uh, the store was um a moderate size it wasn't tiny tiny but it wasn't big it was crammed though but it was crammed full of fabric yeah I mean there's a lot of fabric in there and like the aisles were squishy like one person only down yeah. the aisle at the time you met somebody else you were at yeah. the past but I'll show you what that looks like So we have arrived at the Troll Brothers Quilt Shop. Right here, there's not a lot of other things around here. I don't know how they do business. Well, they do have an online presence, but- uh, There's a pharmacy down there. So what? A pharmacy. Ph oh, pharmacy, okay. So it's got drugs and, and quilting cotton. So we'll go inside. So as you can see, it looks like a little log cabin inside and outside as well. And it's really quite squishy in there, a fair amount in there uh, to choose from. Um, now, I didn't see, with the exception of what I bought, anything that really stood out that I couldn't have gotten somewhere else. And again, prices in there were about yeah, about $20, $21 a meter. Yeah, which I just figured out on my phone. It works out to about 1450 us uh a yard a yard okay so 
Um, they do have an online presence. Um, and the young lady that was cutting fabric for Walter there, I asked her, I said, so why do they call this the Troll Brothers? Well, she said, actually, the store was owned previously by a lady who decided to sell it. And she named it after her two sons. And the way this girl put it was, and they are trolls. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what that meant. I don't know if these are young boys or grown up sons or whatever, but it was the way she said it. And they are trolls. Um, but anyways, uh, they kept the name because it was already sort of an established business, I guess, and didn't want to bother, you know, changing the name because people knew it. And I asked her too, did they, cause they're in sort of out of the way, um, at least to us, they seemed out of the way as Walter said to get to it. Um, I asked her, so do you get a lot of traffic coming in or do you do more business on the, uh, online? She says, no, we get people, a lot of people that come in here all the time. Uh, she says, and, and actually she said well, the day we were in there it was a, a little bit slow but there had been a bunch of people in there before we arrived so i guess it's a thriving business um but it was definitely worth the the to drop in and check it out i thought what do you think what do you yeah yeah i actually about? thought it was okay and actually um they're not um i suppose for people that live on the island they're not necessarily maybe out of the way compared to other places so. no no, and this is, uh, yeah, this is on Vancouver Island now we're yeah. talking about. So, you know, you have to take a ferry from Vancouver, the city of Vancouver, to get well, over actually, to the island. Actually, really, there are quite a few number of stores that sold fabric on the island as compared to Vancouver. Yeah, there was, actually. There was much more there than, yeah, than in Vancouver, which I found kind of strange, but whatever but it, it was kind of neat and you certainly won't forget the name of that store troll brothers okay so that takes me to takes us to one called i always want to say sip and stitch but it's not it's snip and stitch and this was in nanaimo uh so we went there when we first got to nanaimo and this is what I bought. I didn't buy a lot when I was there because most of the stuff I saw, I've seen many times before. But I did create my own little curated bundle of half uh, of uh, fat quarters. And that's what all those triangles are. I bought those separately. But they were having a sale. 20% off everything in the store. Except not off fat quarters. I didn't know that until I got them up to the front. Um, they were about, I think they were charging five bucks a fat quarter, I think roughly. And, um, the very nice, uh, lady who owns the store and there was a gentleman working in the store too. I don't know if that was her husband or, or what, um, they sold a lot of sewing machines. They had Janome, they had, uh, Husqvarna, they had Bernina. And I think they even had, didn't they have uh, um, Bath? They have Bath in there? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think they had mostly Janome in there. Um, they had Bernina. And I thought they had Escovara too. They had quite a variety. I, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. I didn't see. I, yeah, they had Bernina, I think. Well, might be in the video when you see that in a moment. Um, but uh, they um, were having a little problem with their computer system when we were in there. So we were kind of standing around for a bit, waiting for that to come back up so we could pay for what I was buying, which that kind of bothered me a little bit. Well, yeah, actually, it was kind of weird because the lady that owned the store talked to Steve for a while, then she kind of disappeared. Yeah. And there was nobody out the cash. <laughs> and then the the... The guy that was working there, he he went over to it and he says, oh, we can't use this. He says, we're rebooting the system right now. Well, a good thing we weren't in a rush, but really it's not a major criticism of it or anything. I got what I wanted. It was nice to talk to the lady who owned it. And I can't remember what her name was now. And she told Kathy, me, I think. was it Kathy? I think so. Cause she said she knew Shirley. Shirley is yeah. the owner of Ultimate Sales. And actually for, oddly enough, she looked familiar to me for some reason, like I've seen her somewhere oh, yeah? before. I don't know. But anyways, but then I saw this pattern. Now, I have seen this pattern before. 
the as by a company called the whole country caboodle and if uh uh, actually, next week, I'm going to talk about this uh, pattern a little bit more. It's an applique one, but of course, you know why I bought it, right? Because it's got gnomes on it. And uh, it says that it's gnome for the holidays, applique calendar, Canada. So you can do whatever you want with these. Uh, but, you know, each gnome represents a month with, you know, like St. Patrick's Day. He looks like a leprechaun. One looks like Santa, you know, all that kind of stuff. I thought it was kind of cute. Will I ever get to it? I don't know. Um, but they it was 20% off. This was not particularly cheap. It was $53, $54 for that. But it's got if, all the templates. If it's supposed to be a calendar, how come there's only 11 shown there? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, there's 12. They're counting the one that's in. Uh, oh, okay. I see. Yeah. That's there too. Um, but anyways, it was 20% off. Then they had this little contest going on. I guess it was left over from Easter or something. They had little plastic Easter eggs, and you got to pick an Easter egg out of this basket and open it up, and there's a slip of paper, in it and it tells you what additional discount you could add to it. Well, I got 5% more. I have a feeling a lot of them are 5% more. So I got 25% off on that uh, pattern, which was okay. Uh, only thing was I couldn't apply that to the fat quarters, which... I don't know. It said everything in the store, but then the guy told me, oh, no, those are already at their lowest price. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be right. I don't know if whatever was going on in there. But yeah. it, was, uh, it was a fairly large store uh, as well. You'll see yeah. that in the video. Uh, a nice store. And uh, I think they have an online presence as well, too. But let me insert here the... Insights. It was It was a nice store, but I didn't really see anything too unique. For no, that's why I said. So I ended up not buying anything there. So no, because Walter's cheap. Okay, so another quilt destination called Sip and Stitch. Don't know what to expect here, but we found this place. This is in Nanaimo, one part of Nanaimo. So we're going to go in and see what we'll see. Is that Liberty of London? No. Don't think so. How are you two gentlemen doing? Good, thank you. It's okay, a video? Yes, by all means, if yeah. you wish. Okay, I have a YouTube channel. Uh -huh. So I like to visit quilt stores and put those up on uh, the YouTube channel for other people to see. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're not from this area, but that's okay. Yeah. YouTube is universal. We're from Ontario. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you have a beautiful store. Why, oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, the girls do an amazing job. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> Oh, it looks like they have upstairs as well. So you can see that's a fairly large store in there, and they had a lot of sewing machines, and they had a lot of thread as well. And they had a they had a fairly good selection of fabric, I would say, but like we didn't see anything there that we couldn't get here. So we did. That's why I didn't buy that much, and Walter didn't buy any at all. Now they um they seem to really also focus a lot on machine embroidery. While we were there in one section, they had a couple of uh, embroidery machines going and they were doing some kind of projects on that. And they had some, uh, looked like they were advertising some classes in machine embroidery as well. So that of course attracted me. And, uh, and in the video, we also said they had an upstairs. Well, there wasn't much upstairs. Uh, the lady was trying to get us focused when she heard Walter was a guy. Yeah, to wear yeah, it was, she was trying to focus there. She had some uh, finished garments upstairs, and I think she was 
trying to get rid of some old stock on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some kind of something she was using yeah, for lining. Yeah, I don't know, for or lining something. or something. And that didn't really... Um, she had a lot of uh, what they call gauze fabric. Oh, and okay. a lot of ladies use that stuff. And they use it for like baby blankets and stuff. And uh, I've never used it. And I don't really have any desire to get any stuff. They had a, a fairly big ex uh, collection of quilting books. Um, and they were getting rid of the quilting books because they came from the publishing company. Oh, it starts with an M. Someone will know what it is. You said it before. I know. I've I said it. Remember, I and then you don't write it down. I so. didn't. Well, fine. Excuse me for living <laughs> um, with it. But you know what I'm talking about. They just went out of business after many, many, many years. And so she was selling off any of the stock of books she had. And I think they were 50% off. I didn't buy any books because I don't anymore i you can get all that stuff online as pdf format yeah like she had a lot of these jelly pro uh patterns for clothing as well and jelly is actually uh, a company it's out of montreal or out of quebec i believe that has partnered with genomi uh for clothing and but all those patterns you can buy online in pdf format and stuff like that and most of the stuff that she had were ladies patterns so there wasn't really anything there that i had any interest but it was a very interesting store the people working in there were very friendly uh as well and it's located right next to a liquor store so can you go wrong you know you want to do a little shopping you don't want to spend the money go to the liquor store get yourself a little mickey slug back that go in you'll buy everything yeah uh with that so that's in nanaimo um we went to another place in nanaimo as well and i'll show you what i bought there um, I only bought this fabric. I didn't buy anything else. This was in a strip plaza and it was called Surge and Sew. And when we first walked into the store, there was a group of ladies at the front of the store. I think they were working there. One lady was an Asian lady and uh, not that that matters or not, but she gave us the evil eye when we walked in. Like, it was like, oh, what are you doing in here? Are you going to try you know to rob us? You know where you are? <laughs> yeah, do you know where? And I said, "Hi, uh, we're quilters." Oh, okay. She was still apprehensive. I don't think she believed me at mm -hmm. first. And I and I had my phone up. Right, Karen says, "You know, I asked her permission. Can, is it okay if I do some videoing for this?" And she kind of well. And I said, I, "I have a YouTube channel. I'll explain what I do." And once I told her that, I said, "I won't say anything bad about you," uh, <laughs> or that kind of thing i might have been lying no i'm not going to say anything bad about them because there was nothing bad to say about them yeah the store wasn't huge no well it was all right it had a bit yeah. uh in there anyways there was another lady in the store who was like an employee there the uh asian lady who i'm assuming might have been the owner from mm -hmm. what i could gather she disappeared into a back room or something and i got talking to this other lady and she has a an apqs long arm and we got talking about long arms and our, you know, our love-hate relationship with our machines and everything. That was really interesting uh, talking to her. But as for anything, I didn't see anything that stood out except this fabric, which is called Out of This World. And I bought two meters of it. Now, this was expensive. It was $44 for two meters, $22 a meter. But as I said, all the fabric out west is at the upper end of the you know the range for price but i really like this i think it's a timeless treasures one yeah and i think it's fairly new out so other stores may be getting it i don't know well she said they just got this yeah. one in and and the other stuff that i looked at there there wasn't anything really unique that i hadn't seen really before uh that jumped out at me so that would make a nice shirt yeah i had thought about that when you bought it but i wasn't sure so yeah but anyways, uh, there isn't enough of it. I only bought two meters and multiplex yeah, to buy right. three to, to make sure that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I've got it. Um, I just thought it was really quite eye-catching. There was some other things there. They had some, they had a, a couple of, they had a lot of patterns. And there were some that I really liked for table runners or for bags. However, I picked up the pattern. And then I realized when I was looking at the pattern, you also needed to buy a ruler. These patterns, you know how they get you. Um, and I'm not, this isn't a complaint against the store. This is the manufacturer of the patterns that do this because they develop a pattern to use a specific tool. 
and so you know you might be able to to make the pattern without the tool if you could figure it out but you know do you want to go to that effort but i wasn't prepared to buy uh, another ruler i mean i didn't like the pattern that much that i figured you know i couldn't get it somewhere else so anyways that was there and we'll show you what it looked like uh, as well So here we are at our next destination called Surge and Sew. Oops. Right there. So we'll see what we see. Oh, look at this. That one's pretty. I just bought this one in the other place. Let's see, compare price. Holy crap. Is it the same? Well, no, I don't know if it's got the whole 12. That one looks no, like... it's this mug rugs uh, canister wrap pillow cover. And pillow oh, okay. Wrap. It's different because it's $24. The other place was 53 Oh, there, Mugleg kit. Well, that's. There's a series of them, I guess. I gotta shoot video first and then I, I can start looking because I can't concentrate while I do the video. Okay, so you can see again, it wasn't a huge store, but they did have a fair amount of fabric. And I liked how they had their fabric for the most part laid out in like rainbow color. So, you know, you want it yellow or something, you go down and, and pick it out there. So there was definitely some organizational skill happening. Um, they had uh, now we they sold FAF sewing machines uh, in that store. Um, they also had a baby lock thing here. Mm. They said some baby lock as well. So, yeah. So it was an okay store. Um, as I said, the only thing that really stood out for me was the fabric that you saw that I bought, and Walter didn't buy any any there either. Um, it was really nice talking to the lady about her long arm uh mm -hmm. she was very friendly uh in there as well and yeah prices were again on the upper level uh you know up here with everything else probably average price for bc <laughs> put it that way okay so that's all i can think really to say about surgeon so mm -hmm. i wonder why they call it surgeon so did you see any surgers well, I don't know. I didn't really look. No, I didn't look. I wasn't in the market for a surger, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, they... most most sewing machine places will sell surgeons. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah true. Whether yeah, they're just... a quilt store or not. I just thought, why well, call it surgeon sew? Like, why not? Fine. If you had a quilt store, what would you name it? Well, one, I know. One so-and-so. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, how about a sew-hole? <laughs> whatever okay moving on shall we this next one was an adventure no, you can't call it ace holes because that's the guy that does uh fence posts okay whatever <laughs> let's move on shall we okay this one we just about didn't go to this was in a little place outside of abbotsford and it was called chitter chatter and yeah we needed a GPS to find this place. 
you went down country roads, you went down almost gravelly type of roads for it, and we ended up on a farm and we're going up this laneway. And we saw this huge, huge barn and goats this, and goats and this house of a fairly big house, modern house. But we went up the lane and sure enough, we looked down and, and in the lower part, the, the house was sort of built into the side of a hill kind of a thing. And in the lower level, there were quilts hanging outside. And you could see, okay, so this is the quilt store. And we saw the sign, Chitter Chatter. And we greeted the goats. There were goats there. You could feed the goats. You could put money in a little machine, get some goat food, pellets, whatever, and feed the goats. So in we went. And uh, I'm still not sure whether this is going to be much of a place or someone was running this out of their home. Well, yes, somebody was running it out of their home. But they had like patio doors. Uh, to go in, and they had, you know, the screen of a patio door there. And, and this little tiny cubby hole of a room beyond the uh, yeah. the patio door. When you look, you look and at I it, I thought, go, wow, this is pretty small. Okay, this is like rinky-dink. Oh, no, it was not. <laughs> As you'll see in the video, when we got in there, this place opened right up. But we'll talk a little bit more about well, that. Well, it was obviously in a basement, but like the basement was at ground level. Yeah. And they had uh, these patio doors you walked into. And they had taken all the rooms in this basement and converted them into fabric sort of areas. Uh, areas. And in fact, well, you're going to see in the video because one of the employees there, very nice lady, I think her name was Heather. She took us around and gave us a tour of the store as well. But before you see that, we we'll just talk about the fabric I bought. Now, on the left hand side, that was a bundle and that is Juicy Juice. And if you're not familiar with Juicy Juice, it's very modern, uh, has a technical vibe. Yeah, to and it's it. published by Andover Fabrics. Yeah. Or whatever, published or made. And, manufacturer. And Walter's bought Juicy Juice before and done some things with it. Um, do you ever make a shirt out of Juicy Juice? You no, no. I originally bought it to make a quilt. And so I have only small amounts of fabric. But I have been thinking it was taking a piece piecing some of that together so that I'd have a shirt in multicolor. Mm. But I haven't done that yet. A Juicy Juice shirt. Yeah. And then you can see the bundle I bought. Now, again, this is not something that I would normally be going to look for because it's vintage in style. But there was something about this, again, probably because of the blues and that. But the whole bundle just went together. Well, purposely went together. And so I'm going to keep it together. And maybe find something that has a more vintage feel in terms of patterns for it. And then the indigenous fabric, which is by Northcott. I forget what they call this one. Um, I have shown a pattern that I have. And I have more of this fabric. But this fabric is not easy to get. When I saw this bundle of fat quarters of it, I decided, well, I'm going to pick it up. Just to make sure I've got enough of this fabric to make that particular quilt uh, later on. So that's why I, I purchased that. But um, a neat, very deceiving store when you first walk in, as we've already said. And you'll see what we mean when you see this video clip. Okay, so this is interesting. This is Chitter Chatter Quilts. This is in a place called Bradner outside of Abbotsford. It's kind of country. You can see they have goats and you can feed the goats. So they do have quilts hanging outside, another car coming. So here we go. But I'm, I like to put it onto my YouTube channel when we visit where quilt the stores. the till and the tilde fabric is. Okay. And then around the corner here, we got all the Lori Holt in, the vintage. And this room in here is what we call the pretty room, which is all Ooh. your florals, your reproductions, your full collections from Moda, Andover, uh, Jason Yenter are in here. Lots of fabric. Mm, keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> Round the corner here are some roll the batting, but in this room here are your extra wide backings, your batting, your steam -a seam your fireside, your cuddle, your interfacing stabilizers, all that lives in here. Okay. Wow. And number two. Great selection. And these are all wide back? All from here around. Okay. And then underneath, sprinkled around the table. These guys are 60 wide. Those are 90s. These are 80s. Okay. 
but two thirds plus of this room is wide. Right. And then it's got some baby flannel in the other day. And then here you got your shadow plays. And then around the corner here are your moderns and your new moda collections and your landscapey. Wow. Uh, Andover, some Tim Holtz, your Ginny Buyer, some more Andover. Tulip Pink Everglow showed up yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon. And then in here are your modas, grunge, your solids are all along behind these ladies. And then in behind here are your Bella um, Batiks, Moderns, Novelties, Kids. Okay, great. And, and what's your average price per meter? Uh, it starts at around $16.98 right up, or $14.98 up to $21, okay. depending That's on solid good. or price. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the tour. That's great. And, and what's your name? I'm Heather. And are you the owner? No, I just a minion here. Pat. Oh, <laughs> Pat is the owner. Okay. Pat and her family are career farmers. They've been farming here for four generations, 110 years as a family. She raised her four children down here in these rooms. They now grew up and run the farm with their own families. So she took an early retirement and she said, now's my chance. And here we are. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's great. It's great still a working, store. still a working fifty-acre farm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have specialty breeding birds here. Saw your goats. And the poor <laughs> goats. Yeah. And that's a breeding farm for these goats. Oh, okay. So a hundred and some babies born in the last few weeks. The boys are over here in this pasture, and the girls are up here in this pasture. Okay. That's great. That's really control. interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. So I think I'll do some shopping now. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, so for a little place, you can see how many bolts of fabric they had. They had everything in there. And then there were people in there shopping as well. It was like a rabbit's warren. Uh, as you wound your way around, as you as you saw that what Heather, uh, the minion, <laughs> she called herself, uh, showed us around. But yeah, it's a working farm. And that's that lady's home. And as I said, you know, her kids have all grown up and she opened up a quilt store. She retired from doing the farming, I guess, and uh, is doing this. Um, they had probably the best prices of any of the stores, as you heard her say, uh, $14.98 up to about $21.98 a, a meter. <coughs> Excuse me. That's pretty good. Um, Walter didn't buy anything there, uh, but I did. And I've already shown that to you. Um, and now one of the problems that we had when we were in the Abbotsford area is that we arrived on a Saturday mm -hmm. and we were leaving on a, a Tuesday. So um, traditionally there were a lot of, uh, there were a couple other quilt stores in yeah. the area, but they were closed on the days that we were there. So, yeah, Sunday um, and the Mondays they were Sunday closed on. Monday, yeah. So uh, th this place... The two places that we've shown you, they were oh no, the one place we showed you. Well, the one place we showed you, we were we were there on a Saturday, and we were able to get yeah. to them before they closed, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so there's you know, well, we have the same problem in Ontario too. Well, yeah. it's just standard. They're closed. Quilt stores are closed traditionally on Sundays and on Mondays. In this area, in this well, area. actually, in this area, and they seem to do that in Vancouver area as well. Yeah. So, so. Unless and, you're a big corporation like yeah. Fabricland or something like that, and then or Fabricville or something like that, and then they'll uh, or no, it's not Fabricland. Yeah, there's a big place in uh, Richmond. I actually had thought of dropping by there, but we I forgot all about it. It's called Fabricana. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we didn't go there. So yeah, but uh, we did meet the owner. She was there, but I didn't get that on video. Pat, you heard Heather mention yeah. her as well, and we talked to her for a few minutes, but. That was well worth the trip. If you're in the Abbotsford area, then look them up, Chitter Chatter. Um, I think they have an online presence as well. Yeah. I have to check that out yet. Uh, what I am going to do over the next few weeks is I'm going to review their on all of these places we're telling you now that we visited. If they have an online presence, I'm going to also review their online stores uh, too. Um, okay, so that's... The next one we went to was really interesting, not because of their selection of fabrics, but because of the lady was there. But before we talk about the lady that was there, let me show you what I bought. I didn't buy a lot. Um, over on the far side, that was actually a kit. It's a table runner. Um, 
it wasn't a bad price. It's a Bargello. Um, I've had mixed results with Bargellos in the past, um, but I don't think it cost very much. And you went online to get the pattern. She, the lady who owns it, this is called Carolas, C-A-R-O-L-A apostrophe S, quilt shop. And uh, well, this was interesting to find because we went up a mountain, basically. Yeah, we went to Chilliwack that day. Yeah. And it was sort of like on the outskirts of Chilliwack, uh, towards the Abbotsford side. Yeah. That we found. Uh, and Chilliwack's about a half an hour from Abbotsford. Abbotsford, yeah. And we wound around this mountain and went up and up and up. And then we came upon a house. And the GPS said, you are here. And we thought, well, this looks like somebody's house. But there was a little sign on a garage door that said, Carola's Quilt Shop. And I could see through the windows in the garage doors that there looked like there was some fabric piled up. But I didn't see anything that said how you got in there. So we went, started making our way to the front door of this house. And this lady came out with another lady right behind her. No, and, it was a man. By behind oh, there was that. a man. Was it a man? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oops. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a man behind her, and it, they had this look on their face like, I don't know what the hell you're doing here, but we've got a shotgun <laughs> right beside us kind of a thing. I said, hi, are you a quilt store? And she goes, yes. I said, well, we're quilters. So she li livened up a little bit more then. She says, oh, she says, well, usually I'm only open by appointment only. Well, I didn't know that. Um and I said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. But she says, I'm, she's because I'm not always here. That's why. But I'm here today. So yeah, she says, if you want to come in, I'm working with a client at the moment, but you're more than welcome to come in and look around. She says, and you just go around to the side of the garage and there's a door, just come in. So in we came. And yes, it was a garage, a double car garage that had been uh, all insulated and whatnot and fixed up in there. And it was a quilt store. Now things were a little disheveled. Um, it was more like sort of a, a warehouse -y, very small warehouse. Yeah, because actually, she was actually originally an Orifil thread dealer. So she had tons and tons of Orifil thread all in the yeah. industrial boxes. So, And uh, she was getting out of that, but she was getting rid of whatever she had in that. But she had fabrics as well. And as I said, this is what I bought. I, the, the other one, now pink. You know, I do not like pink. Although this is a little bit more, it, in this picture, it looks a little pinker than it really is. It's a little bit more, what do you call it, fuchsia-ish, sort of. Magenta. I don't know, fuchsia. magenta. That was a bundle, but it was an unusual looking bundle. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it attracted me. I picked it up. But the big buy for the day was that fabric on the left-hand side. That's by Kona. No, Moda. Moda, I think it was. And I've never seen fabric like it before. And when you open it up, it looks like water, a watercolor landscape. And she talked, the lady there, Carola, I guess is her, her name. She um, does really interesting things with this fabric. And Walter bought some fabric as well, but he'll show you his fabric in a moment. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This lady, we were there quite a while. She gave us a trunk show while we were there, an impromptu trunk show. And she had some fantastic ideas for art quilts. And uh, you will have to watch the whole video, not today. I only took a little excerpt out of this. Um, but do go to the web or to the playlist that I talked about of our trip. And you'll find this uh, particular video. And she is absolutely fascinating. Okay, this is Corella's Quilt Shop. Corollas, Corollas. And it looks like it's inside someone's house in their garage. And we literally traveled over a mountain to get here. So let's see what we see. So this is Corollas. 
quilt shop. It's actually found out it's by appointment. We didn't know that, but she happens to be here. So she's working with another customer right now. Lots of Kate Facet. Looks like Laura Phil. I think she said to go beyond the cutting table. So anyways, yeah, not huge, but we'll take a closer look. I want to show you is because my daughter liked to make beads. My daughter, she's 35 years old, but a few years ago, she made beads out of fabric where you put them on a, you know, strips of fabric yeah. on a straw with glue. And she would take a strip of fabric and then cut a triangle and all these little, little bits were left over hmm. that she was throwing in the garbage. And so I decided to rescue them, yeah. and I finally made a quilt out of them after thinking I should make them into bowls or something. But this is what I made. Whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. That's spectacular. And those are little snippets. Oh, wow. And so did you, yeah, applique them all on, right? Uh, I quilted them on. Oh, okay. So you just la you laid just them down the pattern yep. and there's quilt over and top. And of course, since then, I've made another little version to make it better. Yeah. Them, I actually, I like YouTube a lot. Yeah. And oh, these, that's nice. Um, oh, yeah. Are just uh, glued down temporarily with washer wash away uh, glue. Yeah. But then they get quilted through the diagonal. And, yeah. And the other way, no hold. And that on. way, you can. You know, work with hexagons and not have to make 2,000 of them. And this is... Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, Tim Holtz fabric. Yep. I was going to say, I love yep, Tim Holtz abandoned. fabric. Yep. Yeah. And so I just made random Dresden plates, different sizes. And you can see right here on this side is a hand-dyed piece, because I like dyeing, yeah. too, from... Wow. Oh, I've uh, never seen that before. This is from Moda. Mm -hmm. It's called Lost in the Woods. And it is um, a very painterly landscape. Yeah. Now, what do you do with this, right? And so I decided I loved all the little components, the 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 green. You can uh, fussy cut whatever color you need out of this. And in my case, it was circles. Now, this mosaic is actually a bird bath I found in a garden center, and it said oh. made in China, and it was inlaid glass in white plaster. And I just took a photograph of it and literally copied it. I can definitely say you sew with things that are smaller than one inch yeah, in size. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Well, they're beautiful. It's great. Thank you for showing the process because... Yes. Oh, and do you see the little border? Yes. There it is again. Yeah, yeah I love <laughs> but that. It, it really framed it because it's all about the center of the quilt. Yeah. And these just... Um, and it, just it allows it. it to float exactly. as well, right? Exactly. So, exactly. which is a nice yeah. effect. Yeah. Gives it almost a, a, a dimensional effect, a 3D, 3D dimensional effect when you use something like that. So, yeah, I definitely that's a technique I've never really tried. But, uh, yeah. Because okay. you don't have a daughter with scraps like that. No. Like that. Do you rent her out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will she fly to Ontario? I've never seen anything. No, like that. I've never seen anything like that either. So, thank you again for showing us all of that. That's yeah. wonderful. So you saw some of the fa that fabric that I bought opened up and she didn't really want to sell me any of it at first because I said to her, do you have that for sale? And she said, well, this is the only bolt I have. I don't know if I can get any more of it. And I really kind of keeping it for myself. And then I said, well, OK, you know, no, no pressure here. But then I came back to it later and I said, no, you're sure you wouldn't sell me a couple of meters of that. And she did. Um, so that was okay. Now Walter bought some there. Yeah, I bought, it's another leaf type pattern. I I always I kind of drawn to kind of like this kind of thing for the shirt. So I saw some of that there, and I I have seen it before other places, but I think it's out of print, so it's an older uh, fabric. Uh, it's called Fresh as a Daisy by Moda, but uh, it uh, I I was drawn to it, so I thought, well, it would make a nice shirt, so I got some of it. Like what was interesting about this shop was not the shop itself, because you could see it's very tiny. She didn't have 
she had a lot of Kate Fassett because she asked me what my aesthetic was. And I said, bold and beautiful. And she said, yeah, hers too. She loved to work in bold colors. And in the examples that she showed us in her little mini trunk show, you could see that for sure. Um, but what was really interesting about this was her. Um, the techniques that she was talking about that she had created, the stuff she was doing on her long arm uh really appealed to me i want to try some of those techniques i'll have to go back and review the full video of our visit there uh in my playlist um again because she was she had an imagination that was just fantastic now she does do uh workshops uh because that's part of her business and she does do like trunk shows for guilds and things like that as well now i asked her i said would she be willing to do an interview with me sometime? And she said, yeah, but she said she want not within the next two months kind of thing, because she was really going into her busy season kind of a thing there. But I will definitely send her an email in a month, month and a half's time and see if I can set up a, a time uh, to do an interview with her. Now, I've had a few people have suggested to me that she would be a great presenter at one of my retreats. And my next retreat after this weekend will be in the fall. I might approach her. The only thing is, I can't pay her. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how much she'd be interested in doing, because this is her livelihood. Mm -hmm. You know, doing something for, for nothing. I don't know. Um, so we'll wait and see. But I think she'd be fantastic. Because um, I could have stood there all day and listen to her. She just kept pulling one quilt after another. And each one she pulled out was better than the one before uh, with it. And I asked her what she did with all her quilts, whether she sold them in that or she entered them in shows. She doesn't enter them in shows, which I was surprised at because I am sure they are show worthy. Um, and she keeps every quilt she's ever made. And she's been quilting for 50 years. She has got every quilt she has ever made. I don't know where she puts them. Um, but anyways, that's quite, quite the thing. Um, so anyways... That was a great store. Now, there was another place we went to I do not have video on, and we didn't buy anything there because it was strange. Um, it was called Black Sheep, and it was in, was that in? What? Duncan or something. That no, was in place. between uh, Victoria and uh, Nanaimo. I think it was called Duncan. I'm not sure. And we were looking for this place, and the GPS directed us to a fabric land, and it was inside the fabric land. That's sort of like Joanne's or whatever yeah. if you want to call it. It's fabric Land is more of an apparel shop, and they do sell some quilting fabric. Um, and uh, it's a large company that has several outlets in all the provinces of the, of Canada. Yeah, we have one and, here where um, we live. And so it was kind of weird that this quilt shop was embedded within this fabric land, and we went in there. And they had quite a bit of fabric, but uh, it was a lot of stuff that we have yeah, it was... already seen. It's not stuff that was really unique or anything like that. No. And actually, I felt a little uncomfortable in there. Yeah, it was a strange environment because it's two stores, but one store was inside another store. And there wasn't even any, like, there weren't really walls. It was just... Like it was cordoned off uh, a little Cordoned bit. off it a little a... bit with shelving kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't know. And um, you walked in there and looked at their stuff, and they had their own cash register and everything. But then you walked out of it, and right there next to it was all the quilting cotton from Fabricland. Yeah. And I don't know. It was really strange. I didn't... And there was a person in that fabric. area, and there was a person at the cash register in that area... They kind of just ignored us. So. Yeah, yeah, they didn't really weren't didn't show any interest in it. So I don't know. Maybe they also owned the fabric land that was there, and this was a way to carry. Uh, I would imagine fabric land has their own fabric that they yeah uh, they have, and um, it uh, maybe it was a way for them to carry additional quilting cotton. Yeah, it might have been, but nevertheless, there wasn't. Uh, I didn't see anything there that stood out. Uh, and yeah, that was not worth it. I didn't even take any pictures. No, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it. And as Walter said, it was kind of a, a strange feeling you felt when you're in there. It was a weird atmosphere. Yeah. So anyways, so those were the stores that we went to when we were out West. Um, all of them are 
unique in their own way. Uh, they all had interesting things to choose from and I bought a little bit from each one, uh, as you can see. Um, so yeah, it was fun. Now we did hold back, and when I say we, I mean me, hold back. I would have bought a lot more if it hadn't been for the fact that we had to get on an airplane to come home. So we were restricted for how much we can bring. But I'm going to make up for it when we go to the East Coast in June for the Canadian Quilt Show because we're taking the car and I'm going to fit it to the rafters. I'm going to get my fix there. So uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing what we saw on our trip. Uh, with all of that. And as I said, I am going to review uh, any of the online presence that these stores may have as well over the next couple of weeks on the Idiot Quilter as well. So I hope you have a good weekend. If you're coming to my retreat, you are going to have a good weekend. I guarantee that. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you next week for another episode of So Chatty. So say goodbye, Walter. Goodbye, Walter. <laughs>